Hi, my name is uh, Aru, also known as Cloyster in the trading community. And today I'm going to do something different. Usually I do content, trading content for PSP.io, but um, since the crypto market is pretty dead and I have some time on my hand, I'm playing a little bit of Path of Exile. And I tried out some solo apothecary farming strategy or several strategies actually. And I just wanted to show you my results from 20 of these maps, fully juiced. And I'm also going to go over my strategy and, uh, yeah, show you the loot. Um, if you're overall interested in trading, um, go, go to teal3.io and uh, check our trading terminal out. But otherwise, if you're just here for the PoE content, that's obviously also fine. Um, there is a slider if you just want to see the loot. Um, first of all, I'm going to go over my character and the strategy that I'm using. I mean, this is obviously a Vortex build trickster, level 100. Pretty tanky and strong overall. So if you cannot handle tier 16 conqueror influenced maps with 80% delirious, then the strategy is obviously not for you. And also, it's probably not going to be the most profitable strategy in terms of raw currency anyways. So what did I do? As I said, I ran 20 of these maps and whoops, this is not what I wanted to do. I'm on the wrong screen. Um, here we go. Let's open up my atlas. So this is overall my tree and I got inspired by some other content creators on on YouTube that shown a strategy where they group farm basically this strategy. What I don't have is Abyss because I really don't like it. And I think it's better to do in a group as well. Um, I don't like chasing the, the Abysses and um, I think it's really annoying. So I, I'm, I am running Wandering Pass. You should know this. Um, so we get 100% increased effect of the small Atlas passes. We get all the quantity stuff, pretty self-explanatory. And also what I did personally, um, I got all of these notes, the tormented notes. What I did do though, if you have Alva, like if you have a lot of Alva missions left, I think it's 100% worth it to just grab all the Alva nodes. This is what I did before, before I ran out of Alva nodes. I don't think it makes too much of a difference in terms of loot though, but um, you get the incursions. If you get a good temple, um, that's like 0.7 to 1 divine for free, basically. Um, and also like the quantity on these nodes is pretty good on some of these nodes. So I did flip this out once I ran out of Alva missions and I just flipped it in. Um, I mean, I do, did, did have those, those anyways, but I just did flip it in into these nodes over here and into these nodes that I get more map drops basically. Um, also, I picked up these for shrine duration. I am running shrines on my map and this is pretty convenient in those super rippy maps as well. This is really important as well. Um, and this is something I didn't, didn't notice before, like this pack size, you definitely need to run conqueror maps because this pack size, you just can't get, um, anywhere else. This is insane pack size and you do want to run, run elder with increased pack size. What I did ask myself though is if Shaper might be worth it, because Shaper also spawns um, additional magic mobs, especially. And I'm, I am running 30% increase magic pack size on my Atlas. But nobody could answer me exactly what Shaper influence does and how much, how many mobs it, it spawns and if they have additional elemental resistance or not. Um, I asked se several streamers, but they really couldn't answer me. If someone knows, um, please post in the comment section if you exactly know what Shaper Influence does. And maybe it might be worth it, maybe it might not be. Um, all I know is that people were telling me Ella might be better because it spawns more mobs overall and there's mobs guaranteed. Um, what we also ran or also running is 
play as VAR skills do not apply soul gain prevention, so I can basically keep up my VAR clarity, which I don't really need this, to be honest, but it's it's nice to have, why not? Um, VAR cold snap I can basically run all the time, which is pretty broken. And VAR haste, which is also really nice to have. And also this gives eight additional um, corrupted VAR monsters. I think they do um, chaos damage, though, so you got to be... A little bit careful with this, especially if you run Searing Exarch as I do, and if you just click blind, uh, Shrine blindly like I do when I see additional uh, jewelry mod, then I just fucking click it. Right, Divination card for jewelry. Um, I don't even look at the mods, which is sometimes a problem, but overall I did pretty well. So we do run three additional strong boxes, and we do run. Strongbox monsters are enraged and have 600% increased item quantity. So pack size, um, eight additional vile monsters, and the benefit of having our vile cold snap up all the time. You don't really need this if you have any other character. Um, strongboxes and enraged strongboxes. And obviously what we do is we get the does not consume sex and uses. And since the you could ro roll other delirium rewards, obviously, but since um, the prices of stack decks is so fucking busted right now, I think it's worth it to just spam divination cards on this. All right, so our total investment, um, let me show you here. Our total investment is pretty high, as you can see. It's overall 25 divines invested into this. And uh, we got out around 36, but I'm going to show you in a second on XLM anyways. First of all, let's look in the, in the tabs. I did liquidate some of the stuff that I found already. So we f I found two seven league stabs, um, Maligaro's mechanism or whatever that quiver is called for 20C. Um, I did sell a hollow palm technique jewel. We still have this in power in here. And as you can see, we have 16 um, fragments. I couldn't finish four of the bosses. They were simply too strong. So if you run this strategy and if you have uh, a boss killer at hand, it's obviously pretty convenient. You just go to the boss and when, the, when you want to do the conqueror, you flip out character and you do a boss killer and that's just insta kill and it's also very time. Um, time saving. I did get two temples overall from those five, six runs that I had left. Actually, no, I think um, one of them was before. I'm, I'm not going to count these, but these are, um, I am not counting these, but these are, uh, I think only one of them is pretty good, actually. One of them is shit. Uh, this one's good. I think this one is pretty shitty. Um, quickly look at it. Oh, no, this is a locust. Wait, where did, where did I put the shitty ones? So I got two Corruption Chambers, which is pretty nice. Um, and as I said, if you have Alva missions a lot left, I think it's worth it running it. It's a bit annoying, of course, but if you can run it, you should run it, in my opinion. We get, dropped a bunch of Scarabs. As I said, I already sold all my Unix that were sellable. Um, and, I mean, this Divine Vessel is whatever. This is a Currency tab. We dropped five raw divines, which is pretty nice. We have almost 800 stack decks, which is obviously insane. Um, I did turn in all the divination cards that gave me gem cutters prism and uh, cartographers and all the other currency like um, chairs orbs and whatnot. So in the map tab, we have a shit ton of crimson temples that we can obviously all sell very easily for three chaos. We have one Maze of the Minotaur, this was from a Divination Card as well, this was from Divination Card as well. And we dropped four Mavens Invitation Ellis Layer, which are over 100 C each. This is not worth anything, whatever. And I also did sort out all the shitty... I mean, I do have a very strict uh, loot filter, but I already... I already... Um, got rid of all the divination cards that are not really sellable. So we have a bunch of void cards. We have some ratched here. We have a lot of 
we have Lakat that we could sell a little bit less than one C each. Um, and then we have, I mean, I guess I could have put these in my normal tab as well. I mean, you can sell these for a bunch of C, but it's it's annoying. I would just put them in my in my normal elimination card tab. It, it is not really anything super interesting here. And these are basically the, the major cards that, that are very expensive. This is over one exalted each. Um, and yeah, overall we dropped some very expensive cards. This is not so good anymore. I think like 60, 65 C, the, the price really plummeted of enlightened card, one nurse card, um, two monochromes. And uh, yeah, I think this is the, the most uh, expensive one that we dropped. We also dropped a bunch of heist. I didn't include this in my tab and we have one full simulacrum. I have seven of those are one divine. Um, but I'm also not dropping too many splinters. I think it's not worth it. It's also not worth it anymore to take uh, to take the these nodes. Um, the, the mobs are just too tanky for me. I mean, I do 11, 11 million DPS for DPS if I go with Varkle Snap, but it's just it's too tanky. <clears throat> so this is not included, and all of these tabs together. As I said, we I, I already got rid of all the divination cards that are not sellable and that we count as um, as chaos orbs, but are not really sellable, which is annoying. So I got rid of those, and um, let me show you in excellence how much we got. So this is our excellence tab. Let me tap into this. So we are at thirty six divine. So we invested around twenty five. This is eleven divine profit. Each map took me like. I would even say between 10 and 20 minutes, it really depended on the map, how quickly I could run it. Um, it's just really gonna depend on your character as well. And so overall, as you can see, the most money we have, our cumulative total value, this is our stacked axe, then our raw divines, and we have some seven years bad luck, Elder Slayer invitations, which are 100 C each, wealth and power, and Accumulative, I think we could already stop like at the second page, but this is all pretty sellable or easily sellable, right? And then, uh, I mean, a bunch of crap here, right? Basically, in the end. So, overall, we go to get to 8,800 um, chaos orbs. And I would say pretty decent loot for a very, very high investment. And we didn't find any apothecary, which is sad, but uh, yeah, just the way it is. It's definitely, if you go solo and if you want to go fast, this is not the strategy for you. You should run something else. And I'm also not sure if it's uh, overall in terms of divines per hour, the best strategy for solo. But it's definitely for me, it's a lot of fun. Plus you get the chance to drop an apothecary. I really can't tell, it's really hard to tell, like, like the, the standard deviation and variance is really, really high with apothecaries, as you should know. So even if I would run solo on this 10,000 maps, I couldn't, you could probably not even tell um, on average how many apothecaries you would drop. It would still be a huge, huge variance. Um, but I think without a, an apothecary on 20 of these super juice maps, having 11 divines profit, is really good, um, especially since I got rid of all the shit that they can't sell already. Um, one more, th right? So one more thing I want to talk about is um, is my tree. And obviously you could run abyss, but it's really annoying for me, especially solo, like chasing these um, this abyss depth. It's really annoying. It's really annoying if you accidentally click abyssal depth and get get sucked into it and then all your shrines are gone it's it's just insane how how, how annoying it is also the abyssal trough does take a lot of time to spawn you got to follow the the abyss through the whole map sometimes it's really cucking you right so i did take these tormented spirit nodes instead and basically as i said i got all the the map duplicates here and map drops and I think overall the tormented nodes are pretty underrated. If you look here, this is 40% quant, 40% quant, and 40% quant for possessed monsters. 
and with the winked scarabs, with the winged torment scarabs, you get 12 additional tormented spirits. spirits. So a lot of the mobs should be touched or tormented between 12 and uh, between 10 and 12 packs overall in the map. I mean, sometimes they are wandering around lonely and didn't didn't hit anything. But if you have these kind of density on your map, I think it's really worth it. If you run elk and ghost strat, this is obviously not not working out very well. Um, they are also cheaper than the other ones. But overall, I did run winked on all of these, and yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with the results. So tell me what you think. Um, in the comments, and um, I would also like if someone could show a similar example with maybe a similar strat with Wandering Pass, um, yeah, and show me show me results. I would be really interested in that. Um, yeah, one more thing. I think also could also be very good especially since the vivid life crystal or whatever it's called is very very expensive right now it could definitely be worth it to run harvest in some form or shape um i think for now i'm just gonna leave my strand as it is and uh yeah that's pretty much it i think I'm going to post a POV in the link for my character if you want to check it out. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in trading, as I said, check out tsv.io. We have a, the greatest trading terminal, right? Um, otherwise, uh, maybe I can make more content if you guys like it, something similar. Um, but yeah, this was just, I just wanted to, to do this for myself basically and then didn't, didn't want it to go to waste. Because I think it's really interesting to, to see loot tables. All right. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, have a good one. Bye bye.